down to here. So you can see that we've got the Sun, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, Mars, all in that area of the body graph. And then a little bit before that, we can see that we've got the um, 19 with Mercury and Saturn, 61 has got Pluto there, and uh, the nodal environment just shifted, and we'll talk about that today, where all of this up here is in the quarter of mutation, purpose fulfilled through transformation. So that's a lot of the, the heavy energies. So you might have noticed a lot of seriousness in your life this week, or maybe um, potentially some emotionality that led you to crying or, you know, some sadness that punctuated your life process. And it might not be that you have to make sense of it or do anything about it. But my advice on these kinds of energetic influential days where there's a lot of planetary activations that lead us to be um, very emotional, you could say, is to remember to breathe first and foremost, and to allow yourself to feel. And the nodal environments are really, um, they just shifted. So they're really going to help us express that feeling, that nature of feeling, because we can see that down here in this quarter of the wheel, which is about uh, civilization, purpose fulfilled through form, we have Mars, and then we also have the North Node, and we have the Moon. So the last and final quarter that we have here is the quarter of duality, purpose fulfilled through bonding. And as you can see, that's where we have the earth. So kind of just giving us a big picture view of what's going on in the tran transitory activations. And I, I have to admit something, you guys, a little bit of confession here. I have a serious grain allergy and I ate something that gives me um, a little bit of a challenge trying to recall words. And also my um, health hasn't been super great this past week. So the brain system isn't working correctly. I'm going to ask for help from my assistants who are here in this room. Those of you who are watching, if you see me faltering and looking for a word, please feel free to type into the chat so I can remember what the heck I'm talking about. I'm not live streaming today. I really, I really wasn't sure if I was going to come in um, and share with you guys what I see. But, you know, when I look at this transit, I want you to know if this is a very short channel, transitory um, nature of this channel itself. This is the channel of openness, a design of being in the mood to socialize or not social or antisocial being. And because the moon is there and the move, moon moves twice in a, twice through the day, through one gate and then another gate in a day. So two gates in a day. Um, this won't be there for very long. In fact, let me just clear this and scroll down and show you. When you see that channel, you might feel really social. You might feel totally antisocial. You can see that the moon is here in line two right now. So line two means it's like hmm, maybe more antisocial because we know that the nature of the line two is about being shy. And if we move further down, we can see that it's going to change around for us 4.30ish um, in the afternoon-ish where we won't have that channel anymore, but we will have a channel that will be over here, which gives us a design of being in the flow or not, the 15. The moon will move into the 8.15, and so it will meet up with that south node. So that was a big picture view. I'm going to go back to looking at the just now from our normal way that we take a look and start with the very beginning, looking at today's uh, line quality. It's a fourth line day. So it's a good day for being friendly, for being influential, for being maybe social in the context of kind of gregarious, like open to socializing, you know, shooting the shit, <laughs> um, chatting with each other. In Hawaii, we call it um, talking story. So I'm going to talk story with you today and allow whatever to come out, come out. And if it's good enough, we'll put it up on YouTube and see how that works. Okay. So when we talk about gate 55, gate 55 is the gate of spirit. It's about abundance being strictly a question of spirit. And when it comes to finding our own innate spirit, that's about going into the passionate abundance of our inner 
truth or knowing the experiential path of having our own individual passion rise to the occasion, rise to the conversation, rise as life force within us. So when we look at this line value, we can see that for the fourth line, sun here, it can either show up as the possible spirit that comes when emotional awareness and energy are balanced and principled. On the flip side, boundless energy that ignores awareness at the risk of spirit. So again, this is a gate activation that gets us in touch with our own inner, and I, I keep saying experiential, even though that's not a keynote of the individual circuitry. Individuality operates as a pulse. It's there or it's not. But when we feel that pulse rising within us and we can experience the flow of energy, that's what I'm calling about, like feeling it literally there in your body. Individual activations are there or not there or not. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and then something happens. And you experience this rise of spirit in this context, in this nature of what you're passionate about. Now, another quality or keynote of the fourth line is about being friends. And it's about, um, I said that already, but um, friendship as a, as a way to finding bonding through brotherhood and sisterhood. And that's where the sun, the core essence is being grounded in the earth. Now, this is the gate of sexuality. So those two are opposites in the wheel, the gate of sexuality in the fourth line shows us the nature of the sexual experience that is being imprinted in us today or anybody who was born today, the power derived from non-sexual intimacy on one side and on the other side where the idea cannot restrain the sex drive. Now, this is so funny. <laughs> the the brotherhood sisterhood line, I've, I've dated lots of two fours in my life because um, just nature of what happens to me in relationship with others is that there, there tends to be this mutual recognition and seeing sometimes with that particular activations. Anyway, um, long story short, I remember being um, pursued, you could say, and I was a married woman pursued by a guy who was a two four. And you know, all he wanted to do was be my friend. That's all he, he said. I just want to be your friend. I just want to be your friend. I just want to be your friend. I, I'm safe to talk to. You know, we have our own virtual speakeasy. It was back in the days when we just started to have internet and I was building websites and I was really on the, on the email a lot. And he got my email. We communicated. And, you know, at some point we became dating buddies. And where the idea cannot restrain the sex drive. This is the nature of how people get into intimacy when they're a fourth line, all fourth lines, any fourth line profile, all need to have an intimate relationship that is built on friendship first. So remember that friendship first, that is what leads to bonding. Now on the flip side, we can see that, remember this is exaltation and detriment. And oftentimes we think, oh, that detriment is so bad. <laughs> um, the intellectual understanding of brotherhood, sisterhood, rarely put into interaction where the rarely put into action, where the idea cannot restrain the sex drive. I don't mean to get political, but I'm just going to say it. Have you guys seen how creepy Joe Biden is? Sorry, I've seen it. He is breathing down like really these, this might be the, the reason of like people getting into, you know, each other's spaces, energetic, like they're just like right in there. This 59.6 is called the aura breaker. It has this powerful draw and it also can really penetrate into somebody's energy. And so and I look at Joe Biden's uh, chart in his Kiron return. He's got this in detriment, I believe, where the idea cannot restrain the sex drive anyway. Uh, side note there. I want to talk about the nodal environment now. The nodal environment, the five and the 35. We just switched. Hey, you guys remember it was in 45 and 26. So we're out of the stream of capitalism. And now we're in the collective streams of abstract and logic when it comes to very, very different nodal environment and frequency. And what you'll see in the environment. So let's talk about the gate activations here. Gate of progress and making change, the gate that says, I feel, everybody moving towards what they want to feel, which as a shared reality, as a shared experience, isn't it true? We all want to feel pleasure and we all run the hell away from pain for the most part, unless you tend to be a pervert that is really into BDSM, right? So on the other side, as far as the um, south node, 
Now we're looking at a very, still collective, but a very different kind of frequency. So this one is about feeling and it's about the experiential path and it's about wanting to make progress and change and wanting to get somewhere and being bored. Oh my God, being bored and wanting a new experience. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, because remember nodes are always opposite in the wheel, you couldn't get further away from that. This is the gate of waiting. And 35s do not like to wait. They want to have new experiences. They're bored. They're like, like wanting to change it up. There needs to be something different happening. Now I've already been there, done that. Whereas the five, I have five a couple of times. Fives are very fixed in their patterns and their rituals and their routines. If you've ever lived with a five, and my daughter is a five in her incarnation cross line one, fixed patterns, gate of waiting. So what you might see now, this is the sixth line and nodes always move backwards. So what you might be seeing as you observe the nodes moving backwards, different thematics, six line is we're going to see hypocrites or not people who are role models, perhaps of change people who are role models of um, fixed patterns and waiting or not. Remember, there's always the or not. So you might see the hypocrites. Oh, I, you should wait. You should wait. Follow your strategy and authority, says somebody who's teaching human design in the very beginning. Yeah, follow your strategy. Wait, wait to respond. Wait, wait, wait. And yet, are they really doing what they're teaching? I have to admit. I didn't get it in the beginning. I thought I did. I thought I was getting it. I thought I, oh, I waited. I slept on it. Yeah, I slept on it. And then when you go to push the button to hit send on the text, I remember there was this text that I sent when I was so excited about being a BG5 assistant teacher. I sent it onto Facebook. I tagged everybody. I was so proud, so excited. And then they said, you're not an assistant teacher. You're a teacher's assistant. Oops. And I was nervous before I hit that button, before I hit send, I could feel it. But I, you know, there was this um, experience. I really want to share this because this is what it's like to be me. And I feel like it's really important to help people understand or relate to. Um, let me get my chart up here. As far as this chart is concerned and the, um, I was trying to open it in a new body graph. Anyway, um, a new window. So what it is to be me is that I can remember my whole life, particularly as a, you know, growing up an older, a young adult. I'm not really quite an adult yet. Got a few more months until I get there, um, according to human design. But I remember my 20s for sure. And even into the 30s. Okay. So what it's like to be this design is there's a lot of imagination and fantasy. And oftentimes I could feel this anticipation, you know, in many different, all kinds of contexts of all kinds of experiences of what it's like to be me. I can remember this energy, this rising energy. And because that rising energy was uncomfortable in order to get rid of the rising energy, I would just press the button, let the thing happen, do the thing, get rid of the energy the nervous anticipation, wanting to know what exactly will happen. And that got me into so much fucking trouble. I can't tell you guys how much trouble that's gotten me into by just allowing, you know, I can feel the rise of energy. Okay, if I just make a decision with this energy, if I get rid of it, then I won't feel this way. And who knows what's going to happen? Oh, well, you know, I'm designed to learn from the mistakes, the, the trial and error of the mis take as in bad, as in oops, as in wrong. However, that's what's exactly correct for me. So learning through this experience of the fact that what tends to happen when we're not in alignment is that we, uh, we don't wait. <laughs> there. We're being taught now by the nodal environment to see when people don't wait, what are the experiences that tend to happen because of the not waiting. So tune in to seeing that you listen to the news or watch people on Facebook. That's a great place to people watch, isn't it? In the social media realm and just notice that. So here's the line values that I want to share with you. This is about learning the energy to correct. So progressive change that results from correction or correction, which brings change through severity and even destruction and will always meet resistance. So this is the problem I've been having this week. Can you hear the, there's a roughness to my voice. Dang it. <clears throat> it's the, um, 
the same thing that happened when I started experiencing the real bad illness that I didn't know it was an illness. Um, I have thyroid hypo um, thyroidism and it came back this week, the, the roughness in the voice. So I'm going to have to cut today short and just rest so I can teach my class later today. Um, when it comes to this transit, so I won't go through all the other activations or what it all means. Apologize, guys. At least I came. <laughs> I wanted to be able to at least show up instead of go, you know, I kept email and not crickets. Um, the most important thing to remember in this time of year is to make sure that you do not make emotional decisions, especially if you are a non-emotional person. And as my eyes fill up with tears in recognition of how meaningful this experience, this ability to, to speak to someone and have them listen to what I have to say as a projector who is able to now have all the wildest success I ever dreamed of, I just hope and pray that you yourself too can learn to live and be your own authority because by being that own authority, you experience so much different of a radical life. You know, the, the life itself may not look different to the outside world, maybe. Might be radically different. In my case, it is radically different than what my life used to be like. But when you go through your awakening and you come to this realization and recognition of who you are for yourself, generator, for others, projector, and so forth and so on, it doesn't matter what it looks like, the life to your mind. What matters is the sensation of the body and the feeling of the essence of the spirit that arises from within you. And that spirit for all of us, success projectors, satisfaction generators, peace manifestors, surprise, my beautiful reflector friends. I'm so sorry I have to go again <laughs> um, because I need to rest the throat. Okay. So thanks for being here. Sorry it was short. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. You're welcome. Mwah. I will. <laughs> welcome. Bye.